the word paresis, P-A-R-E-S-I-S, like the word paralysis, is not a pathologic term. It's a clinical term. Paresis is like paralysis. It usually implies impaired uh, motor activity, secondary, usually, frequently, or perhaps always to uh, underlying uh, central nervous system disease. Syphilis, in its severe inflammatory form, caused a condition called general paresis, in which there was significant impairment of muscle. Let's take a look at this brain, which has uh, producing the syndrome general paresis. The first thing you could notice is that uh, for some reason, the blood vessels stand out very nicely. Another thing that you could notice is there appears to be in general an increase in the glial cells. So we have gliosis, we have uh, prominent uh, standing out blood vessels, and lo and behold, in some of these blood vessels, you appear to have a little cuff of inflammatory cells, almost like an encephalitis, like you see classically with the viral encephalitis. In addition, you could see in part of a ventricle here, I assume it's a ventricle because it's lined by uh, um, ependymal cells and there's a portion of a choroid plexus in it. You can see that there is some inflammation, uh, inflammatory cells surrounding the blood vessels in the choroid plexus as well. In addition to having increased blood vessels, some of which are cuffed by inflammatory cells, gliosis. We also see uh, blood vessels in which there's a significant uh, cuffing of uh, lymphocytes around the blood vessels as well, like here and here and here. This is a very, very, very common and often routine hallmark feature of an encephalitis. And although it is most uh, characteristic of the viral encephalitis, in this case, we could see a cuffing of uh, this blood vessel by these lymphocytes in the uh, theoretical or potential space called the virchow robin space of the brain. This is an encephalitis pathologically. Clinically, it's producing a syndrome called paresis. And thank you very much.